All right, folks, it is May 23rd. It's a great day for the number three. 23 is the ninth prime, three times three. And I predict another win by the Golden State Warriors, three times three times three times three times three over the Houston Rockets, which is in game three today. <laughs> Last game, we saw the most obvious three fests that God could possibly ordain. <laughs> they scored 99 points, and Stephen Curry, Mr. 30, 30 the captain, scored 33 of those points, okay? I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Remember, God is sovereign. It's his story, and the numbers are perfect. And um, everything is by his grace for his glory. So, um, today is the 23rd. And I, today is game three of the Golden State Warriors versus the Houston Rockets. And I predict another fabulous display of threes by the Golden State Warriors. And I believe that they will win again over the Houston Rockets in Game 3, okay? So remember, Golden State Warriors adds perfectly to 243, which is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's 3 to the power of 5, which is 3 to the power of the third prime. It's so good, it's not even funny, okay? And um, I've talked about all the threes in their team and the history of it and the names of the players and the numbers of the players and all of that good stuff. Just know that it is the ordinance of God that this team is doing what they do, that they're sinking all the three-pointers especially that they sink, and it's all happening in perfect timing according to my numbers revelations that I've been receiving from Jehovah at this point in history, it's all happening perfectly on cue. So if you want to watch an exciting sports game, watch tonight, at least the highlights, the Golden State Warriors versus the Human Rockets, and pay close attention to the number of threes that you are going to see come into your eyes. You're like a detective, you know, like Encyclopedia Brown, those books you read in high school. How much are you going to see? going on in the glory of God in your eyes in that game and in that stadium. If you're really good, you'll solve the text written on the billboards and the companies that are, you know, that are the sponsors of this whole event and, you know, Kia, Oracle, you know, that all divide by three, ZTE and stuff like that. The coolest one that I think in terms of broadcasting is it's either ESPN or TNT, okay? Those are the two main broadcasters of this basketball series, and by divine norms, both equal love perfectly. Do the math yourself. ESPN equals 54 equals love. TNT equals 54 equals love. It can't be any more obvious than that, folks. And uh, we solved the roots of basketball. So, but this is happening live today, real time. We've, we've solved the roots of basketball. We've dug up the history. We've scooped up all the gold there. Well, I've shared with you more than enough but now it's fun time. Now it's the real time action of God on the stage. Okay? Remember, he's in control of every atom. Everything is by divine ordinance. The Bible says a man can receive nothing except it has been given to him by heaven above. So every single time that Stephen Curry shoots a three-pointer and it goes in, the sovereign God ordained that shot to go in. He said, yes it's going to go in, or no, it's not going to go in. So that when the ultimate story is finished, it's mathematically the best story possible for the glory of the Trinity. And you just need the proper eyes to see it and add it all up, and if we were intelligent enough, we could add up things like the scores between the games and this, all every detail. Okay, You're just entering into how good God really is. You're just starting to believe and starting to get how intelligent God is and how sovereign he is. Okay? So, um, I am so excited about this game tonight. It is game three of the Golden State Warriors versus the Houston Rockets. And interestingly, I love this. We saw James Harding uh, the other day, who is also a Christian. He's basically the, the best player on the Houston Rockets. Um, we solved the name James. We solved, you know, you know, his number and all that stuff, and I pointed out details, but tonight, and even the time that these games are happening at divides by three. In Eastern Standard Time, it's 9 p.m. Over here on the Pacific Coast where I live, it's 6 p.m. Like, how many more threes can you get in the perfection of all this? And today, they are playing in Houston, 
which are, would be maybe Central Time, but they always advertise it, Eastern Standard Time for New York, and Pacific Time is where I live, West Coast. Okay, so Eastern Standard Time, the game starts at 9 p.m. 9, 3 times 3. Where I live, it starts at 6 p.m. That's perfect. That's, you know, 3 plus 3. Um, and uh, so, I predict a Golden State Warriors win. It will be their third win in three games. And I believe that in this particular game, which is game three of the series, that we will see some exceptionally beautiful threes um, in this particular game. Pay particular attention to the third quarter. I'm not joking, folks. I did the math on all of the phrases. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. And only the phrase third quarter divides by three. And then I did the same thing. This is led by God. Do the math yourself. And then I did the same thing on the word period, as in hockey. You've got the first period, second period, third period. Well, only the phrase third period divides by three. And then you can do the same thing with the word inning from baseball. And of course, baseball has nine innings, three plus three plus three. But the third inning divides by three. So all of these phrases, these three word phrases that I'm going to speak in order, all divide by three. The third quarter. The third period. The third inning. Wow. So, pay particular attention to the third quarter today in game three of this game. And to really hit this one home for you, if you haven't watched the famous third quarter of Clay Thompson from January 23rd, okay, there's another famous 23. Today is May 23rd. I'm telling you, magical things are going to happen today for the number three. I am telling you. Okay, look what God ordained on January 23rd of this year. Clay Thompson, number 11 from said Golden State Warriors, sunk nine three-pointers out of nine attempts. You watch, watch that whole quarter and read all the stats on it. Nine three-pointers in nine attempts. He didn't miss a shot. He also made a deep three-pointer after he was fouled. It was after the whistle. He had a left-handed layup, a right-handed, one-handed alley-oop dunk, a couple field goals, it, it was the most perfect display of basketball, and I think a couple free throws. It was like the most complete, perfect quarter in basketball land in the history of the universe. And, uh, of course, he's got the all-time record now for most points in a quarter. That happened in the third quarter. When? January 23. And here we are on May 23. I'm getting goosebumps, folks. I can't wait to see what God's going to ordain in this quarter, in this game. But particularly, watch out for the third quarter. Watch the third quarter. I believe you're going to see some very special threes happen in the third quarter of this game. Um, and, uh, I mean, when something that dramatic happens, you know God is up to something. It's like, you know, the dad saying to the kids, look, here's a big flashing red light. Like, dig here, dig here. You know, God is at work in the Golden State Warriors. And remember, that entire team is basically Christian. They are the most Christian team in the NBA. Their captain wears a bracelet around his left hand that says, In Jesus' name I play, produced by the company Active Faith. When they're at home, you will notice it's gold. When they're away, you will notice it's blue. That's Stephen Curry, number 30, the captain. And he is the MVP of the NBA this year. And it's all happening by God's sovereign will to glorify himself and his son, Jesus Christ. Don't miss it. Don't miss the game tonight. But to, at least the highlights. Okay, The Golden State Warriors. And so how many months is that since January 23rd? Um, February, March, April, May. Today it's May 23rd. So it's been four months. February, one month, no, February, March, April, May. Yeah, it's been exactly four months basically to the day um, since that epic display of three-pointers by Clay Thompson in the third quarter of the Golden State Warriors. Um, you got to be kidding me. Nine three-pointers? in a single quarter, 100% shooting accuracy, plus he had the most insane other plays. It was flawless. It, it, was, it was complete. You know, he had a, a left-handed layup, right-handed, one-handed alley-oop dunk, <laughs> couple field goals. I believe he shot from the free throw line. I believe he had two free throws. Yes, he did. He had everything, the full package. Alley-oop dunk with the right hand, left-handed layup, couple field goals, nine three-pointers, and two free throws. What more can you ask for for the game of basketball? It was ordained by God. It was officially the perfect quarter in the history of the game. The best quarter any player has ever achieved in the history of basketball. 
And yes, he is a Christian, and it all happened in the third quarter. And yes, he is a part of a team, and that team is called the Golden State Warriors, which adds perfectly to 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And it also happened in Oracle Arena. Well, Oracle equals love, and Arena divides by 3, and it just keeps coming. You just have to understand God is perfectly on cue. So the revelations that I've been receiving about numbers for the past several years are perfectly coinciding with what God is doing in basketball land and with the Golden State Warriors so that here we are right on cue and today and this morning here we are today is May 23rd it's in the morning it's uh, 720 it's 722 a.m. okay and um, I am encouraging you to watch that game tonight and uh, watch out for the threes in particular watch um, the third quarter Look, the whole game will be mathematically stunning to glorify the number three. And I do believe that the Golden State Warriors will win this third game. We do know, above all, that it's going to be maximum for the mathematical glory of the triune God. Okay? And then the more we look, the more we will see. It's that simple. Okay, I want to share an awesome word from Jehovah that I've had for a while and I just got reminded of it this morning. I love you, Daddy. Adds perfectly to love plus love plus love. I love you, Daddy. Talk about a famous phrase, a famous set of letters in the story of God. Okay? I love you, Daddy, equals love plus love plus love. You know, love number one here, love number two here, and then 36 plus 9 plus 9, love number three, 162, love plus love plus love in the phrase, I love you, Daddy. 54, 54, 54. Okay? I love you, Daddy. Um, <laughs> To pick a very well uh, positioned line from a movie that has this famous phrase, I'm not joking, folks. Watch the ending scene of Walt Disney's The Little Mermaid. I'm not joking. They hit this one out of the park in that movie. Remember the scene where Ariel is uh, on the wedding barge with Eric and uh, everything's all happy done and she's basically about to sail off into the sunset and she gives one final farewell to her father, Triton. And, uh, by the way, you can solve all the characters in that movie. Like, Triton divides by three. Trident that he holds divides by three. Ariel divides by three. You know, it, it, and it comes from the Hebrew word for lion. You know, it just, you're just like, yep, here it is. Um, you know, all the characters. Like, you can solve Scuttle, Sebastian. It's fun. You know, it's like you're watching Disney movies. You're just, like, solving everything for the glory of the Trinity. You're not foreordained. Yep, thank you very much. It's like... Of course, uh, the word mermaid divides by three, little divides by three. Now, now there's people like buying mermaid outfits all over the world. They're like getting millions of hits on YouTube. Ladies just buying mermaid outfits and they're swimming in pools and people are like into this. I'm like, well, there you go. Mermaid divides by three, little divides by three, the divides by three, the little mermaid divides by three. Four ordained by heaven? I would say so. Um, think about how many smiles it's brought to people worldwide. Um, and, um, of course, I've solved Jeffrey, Jeffrey Katzenberg a million times. But anyways, um, so, <laughs> it's one of my favorite ending scenes of any Disney movie because it's classic Disney. It's just, the timing of the symphony is just perfect. So, Triton comes up from the water to give Ariel a last hug. They embrace, and she says these golden words in a, in a whisper that must have taken them 12 times to get perfect in the recording studio. I love you, Daddy. That was terrible. What I tried to do was terrible compared to how perfectly they execute it. It's like, I'm telling you, they must have tried 20 times to get that whisper perfectly because it's so difficult to get. But I'll just say it normally. She says, I love you, Daddy. And then the symphony just comes perfectly on cue as only Disney can do. Now we can walk. Now we can roam. Now we can play. I'm going to close this window so people don't think I'm... <laughs> No, <laughs> seriously. It's like, then, the, then the, 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 the symphony just kicks in, like, just watch. It's like, I love you, Daddy. And then this, the music kicks in. Now we can walk, now we can run, now we can stay all day in the sun. Just you and me. You know, and you're just like, I love Disney endings. Um, that is to say, when they were, like, really king. Like, that was a gold medal movie. I mean, at least the ending was. There was, there was obviously, whatever. I'm not gonna. I'm not picking apart Little Mermaid right now. I'm just focusing on the ending. I love you, Daddy. Equals love plus love plus love. Okay. <laughs> I seriously encourage you to watch the ending scene of that movie. Um, you know what? 
I'm just going to play the audio of it right now for you. Just because I love, I am a teacher's teacher, and if I have an example of something that I'm talking about, I'm uploading video, so it might take a little while. Um, and I don't want to get any Little Mermaid, just for educational purposes. Ending scene. We got lots of time. It's just hilarious. It makes me happy every time I watch it. Um, so check this out. I just want you to hear this line. I'll try and crank up the volume so you can hear it. Uh, where are we here? I just want to get to the last. Here it is, right here. Right here, we'll just jump straight ahead. Now I'm uploading video, so it might take a couple seconds because of the bandwidth, but um, it's just a very famous phrase that was done really well in a movie. I love you, Jennifer. Can you hear that? So that's 45, okay? And then you can do the, the math and the Little Mermaid, Triton divides by three, Triton divides by three, Sebastian divides by three, you like scuttle this together with flounder and it's just like shh. Um, so, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's how it works. So I'm just gonna tell you the truth, folks. Ariel has three friends, Sebastian, scuttle, and flounder. Well, Sebastian divides by three, flounder is plus two, so, um, scuttle is plus one. So put all three of them together, they all divide by three. You're just yeah, solving the entire movie. It's just like fun stuff. Um, but this line belongs to God. Like, okay, I love you, Daddy. Come on. Those words belong to God. I mean, those are the words that God honestly wants to hear from you. Okay, let's bring it home here. Those are the words that God wants to hear from you and every human being on this planet. I love you, Daddy. Now, you can also say, I love you, God, because God has the same offset as Daddy. So, I love you, God, divides by three perfectly as well. Okay. What does I love you, God, add to? That is, um, don't you love that ending? Doesn't that just make you happy when the symphony, like, comes in? You're just like, I love perfection. Um, it is. It's just like, <laughs> they, they timed the audio of that perfectly, you know, a nice little symphony in the background. Triton comes up, Ariel's right there on the boat, and she just has that golden whisper. I can't even come close, I'm sure of it. I love you, Daddy. Like, I, if I try and do that breathless thing, I just sound wheezy. But she gets it perfectly. I love you, Daddy. Like, I can't, I, I, in a million years, I don't think, I love you, Daddy. And then it's like, now we can walk. And then all the symphony people just, like, rise up, and you're just like... This is hilarious. Um, okay, so, <laughs> I love you, like, seriously. <laughs> like, 
mean, seriously, folks, like, just put that, like, cut that audio slice of that ending. Put it on your MP3 player and just, like, make yourself laugh regularly. Okay. Um, I love you, God. Um, 26 plus 25, 51 uh, um, plus 960 uh, plus 36, 96. Wow. It equals 150. Very, very perfect for three because remember, 15 is king and you got 15 times 10. So I love you, God, is 150. I love you, Daddy, is 12 points higher. It's just each is beautiful in its own way for the number three. Okay, but I love you, Daddy. Love plus love plus love. I'm sorry, but I have to do this one more time. One more time because it's that perfect. One more time. Cue it up, people. Cue it up. I, I do apologize, but I have to do this one more time because it's that good. intelligent, mathematically perfect scripts created that glorify the triune God who is love. There you go. There's a perfect example for you from The Little Mermaid. Oh my goodness. Now you're going to want to like solve every movie you've ever watched. Sure, go for it. You'll do it. Um, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Ariel. My name is Ariel. Ariel? Ariel? Alright. You're just like, this movie is hysterical. Um, but, uh, the name is King, you know, and the voice is King and yada, yada, yada. And, um, that <laughs> just cracks me up. I love Disney. I want to see as many people at Disney become Christian as possible. Uh, because there's so much talent in that company. But I would just love to see as many of them be Christian as possible. And we need our understanding of God healed. And uh, we need to know that God is love, that Jesus Christ is God. There's three members of the Godhead, God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And every word that we speak in any language on planet Earth is ordained by that triune God to glorify himself mathematically constantly. Okay? So, we need to produce content that promotes love, because God is love. Okay? Uh, once you understand that God is love, and you've seen the glory of it in all of the words and phrases and math of world history, then you as an artist and the, the, the creative writers and directors and film producers and fabulous screenplay and all the people at places like Disney will now have a focus of love. God is love. So every movie that we produce should promote love. Holy love as defined by God, okay, in the Bible. <laughs> and you are free to create and bear his image as artist, creator, and uh, storyteller. Uh, but love needs to be the purpose of it all. Love, joy, happiness, you know. Um, and uh, I, would love, I would love nothing more than to see all the talented, beautiful, creative, artistic people at places like Disney be healed in their understanding of Jesus and be healed in their understanding of God, that he is love um, and he's not against the arts and he's not against creativity and he's not against uh, drama and performance and entertainment and um, creativity and music and graphics and all this stuff. But um, I would like to see everyone get filled with the Holy Ghost and produce some fabulous, fabulous mind-blowing, love-centric, dazzling, beautiful, we can do it, folks. Architecture, film, graphics, 3D, 2D, um, humor. Man, I'm, I'm a, we solved the word humor the other day. Humor. 
In case you're wondering whether or not God loves humor, in six letters, and you have to spell it with six letters to get the full glory, this is 21 plus 21 in the front, this is love in the back, that equals 96 in six letters. Divides by 24 triple A. Okay? Humor. God is the master of humor. <laughs> just watch The Little Mermaid. You, <laughs> just go on the little... I'm not joking, folks. I... This might shock some. I, I was at Disneyland for months when I was receiving an abundance of these mathematical revelations for God. Okay? And I went on the Little Mermaid ride dozens of times. I'm not joking. Dozens of times. And I was looking around and I was solving everything mathematically and I was just delighting myself in the numbers of God and just receiving revelations on all the sovereignty of God and the numbers and everything. Um... You're just like, everything is a wonder, you know? Anyways, but, um, humor. <laughs> humor. <laughs> humor is the gift of God. And, um, so, I would love to see Disney healed in terms of their understanding of Jesus and their understanding of God, okay? Um, and I would love to see just a massive renewal of love-centric content, pure love-centric content that is watchable, by children of all ages, you know, that is watchable in churches, that is, that everyone is comfortable to watch. There's, and you know what it is, you're made in the image of God, okay? And, um, just, you know, you should create content that you would only feel happy and proud to watch with your children, like, to put in front of your children's faces. I'm like, we know this stuff, people, we just need to recommit to it. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> So, you know, oh, the triune God who is love, you know. Um, so, man, I just, I really do want to see people as happy as possible, you know. Um, and if that means doing creative works that God inspires you to do and you're worshiping Jesus while you do it, Finally, finally, we will have gotten it. We'll be like, like the Bible says, whatsoever you do, do all in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So if you're an animator at Disney, if you're a scriptwriter at Disney, if you're an audio artist at Disney, if you're an Imagineer, okay, it's all about personal relationship with God. That's what God wants. He wants to be in a personal relationship with you, where you hear his voice daily, and you pray to him, and you get ideas from him, and you talk to him, and you're in a personal relationship. It's a, it's a metaphor, but I honestly like to use it. Think of Aladdin and the genie. You're Aladdin, the poor guy, the poor mortal guy. It's like God is the genie. Well, you guys are capable of dialoguing with each other every single day. He wants to talk to you. You want to talk to him. And... Uh, He's got a lot up his sleeves that you're not capable of doing. <laughs> kind of like that song in the movie says, You ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> you ain't never had a friend like God. <laughs> you know? And he's capable of doing really, 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 really cool things. <laughs> you know? So, um, I mean, if there's a group of people that promote believing, I would say it's the Disney crowd, you know? So... Bring on the faith. Bring on the salvation. <laughs> you know, channel your belief towards the Son of God who died on the cross for you and is alive forevermore and loves you and is going to talk to you every single day and worship Him. Hallelujah. You know, just, I, um, just, everyone gets saved and we all go to Disneyland. And when I just like, come on, you know, like, it's not, it's not like, um, anyways. No, seriously, people. Seriously. I, uh, I really want to see everyone healed in their understanding of God and their relationship with God. And um, you will talk to God daily. And He will talk to you daily. And He'll give you ideas. And He'll encourage you in your work. And He'll like help you with your emotional trials throughout the day. Whatever. Okay? Um, you are literally... Remember the word Jehovah equals husband. And the Bible tells us that Jehovah God, we are, we are wed to him in Christ Jesus. He is our literal spiritual spouse, if you will. We are wed in a covenant 
with Jehovah God, who loves us more than any other human being on the earth. Okay? So by divine ordinance, the word husband equals Jehovah. Do the math yourself on the, on the letters husband and Jehovah, and you'll be amazed. And then you can find love plus 15 in each of those words. Okay? And, um... Nothing is impossible for God. I mean, I, I, there's nothing that uh, Disney loves to talk about more than doing the impossible. And Walt Disney said that. He said it's kind of fun to do the impossible. And um, there is nothing that is impossible with God. Did you know how much we could achieve if everyone was filled with the Holy Ghost and everyone was in love with God? Do you know how much we could actually achieve in the name of love? We could outdo any generation that has ever come before us. And why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we step up to bat and hit a bigger home run than any generation that ever came before us? Why shouldn't we? This is our stage right now. This is our time. Are we going to drop the ball? Are we going to put on a bronze medal performance? Or are we going to give a gold medal performance? We have what it takes. We need to confess the glory of, of God and worship Him. And we need to get together and start working together to do amazing things. I've always said, folks, the story of Disneyland is an example. That place was created from scratch in less than one year, physically. Like all the materials, because men had a vision that was seeded in love. And... Uh, it, it takes a revival. It takes a renewal in leadership. It takes a renewal in people's hearts to do something for love and to do something beautiful together. Um, and look what mankind can accomplish when he unites and has good leadership. Just read the story of how Disneyland was created and how short a time it came together. It's a place of beauty and joy and love and laughter for millions. Okay? Well, you know, I just, I just would like to see more people saved, filled with the knowledge of God, bonding together in love, and doing things together for the purpose of love, okay? So once you know that God is love, it's like, no, not, not God just loves people, you know? And he's this all-powerful person. No, 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 not, not like God just loves people, or God is loving, or God knows what love is. No, God is love. And God is equals 54. And love equals 54. God is love. And anyone can do the math. God is love. How can that be? How can God be love? Because he's three persons. Three persons in perfect harmony. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're saying, who is the Holy Ghost? I've never heard of the Holy Ghost. Now you're getting excited. You want to read the Bible now. You'll, you'll find out who the Holy Ghost is. Start with the last chapters in the book of John where Jesus introduces who the Holy Ghost is. And then read the book of Acts where the Holy Ghost is working and filling people. Okay? And, um... So, and then the fruit of the Holy Ghost in the life of any human being is... There's nine of them. And I absolutely believe that those nine knit together in three threes. <clears throat> just like the six days of creation. Okay, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I believe that number one knits together with four, number two with five, and number three with six, and you keep going in threes like that. Just like the six days of creation pattern. Um, I'm like, we, like, think of the United States alone. Over 300 million people. What could 300 million people create together? if they were all united in this concept that God is love. And that everything that we do in this life, and everything that we produce and do together, is supposed to be for maximum love. It would be incredible. It would be incredible. Um, so, there you go. I love you, Daddy. Amazing. One of my favorite thoughts of all time, always, my whole life, has been that nothing is impossible for God. 
If you were to ask me, St. Derek, what is your favorite thing about God? One of the first things that would come to mind is that nothing is impossible for him. Nothing is impossible. He actually is magical. <laughs> like, he's capable of materializing stuff out of nowhere. He's capable of making me fly around the room right now if he wanted to. He's capable of teleporting me to Disneyland right now if he wanted to. He's capable of healing anything that might be out of place in my body. He's capable of granting me supernatural providence right now. Anything. God can do anything. Okay. And, um, so, <laughs> that, that's honestly, um, one of my favorite thoughts about God is that nothing is impossible. And uh, so I believe that hundreds of millions of people can understand who God is um, in a level and in a personal relationship experience that they've never had in their entire lives. I believe that can happen in Canada and in the USA and in Mexico in North America. I believe that God is capable of making that happen. And if and when that does happen, then you will see unspeakable levels, certainly unparalleled levels, of human love and human care and human productivity and human accomplishment like never before in the history of this continent. That is what God is capable of. He's capable of doing that. He's capable of reviving us. He's capable of awakening us. He's capable of teaching us things that our fathers did not know. And he's capable of doing things through us that no humans have ever done before. And he's capable of showing us things that no humans have ever seen before. Because he's God. And whatever he wants to do, he does. God always gets what he wants. So the question is, what does God want? <laughs> we just want to be in personal relationship with Him. We want to be walking right close to Daddy, so to speak. And um, I believe it will be a miracle-filled journey. Because miracles, miracles follow God like dust falling off of like a gold sheik. <laughs> you know, it's like if you were walking down the street with God, and he was wearing this gold robe that was just like flaking dust off it everywhere and everything that just like, you know, flaked off of his gold robe just like sprouted color and like burst into fireworks. You'd be like, yep, this is me and my life with God. Miracles happen in front of me. Miracles happen on the left. Miracles happen on the right. Miracles happen behind us. I look back at my walk with God and man, there's just all this cool transformation happening behind us. God who is life, God who created all life, God who is love. Okay? Everything inside of us wants to see the supernatural. Everything inside of us wants to see and experience God's healing power, His love, His grace, His romance, His mercy, the whole package. Okay? Um, and God always saves the best for last. That's the testimony of all the scripture, it's the testimony of history, it's the testimony of all the stories of the Bible, including the book of Revelation. Okay, So, knowing that, you should absolutely be expecting that God is going to do greater things in this generation than you've ever heard or seen. You have to expect that God is going to blow you away, because he always saves the best for last. He's the God of increase. Today, your relationship with Him will be sweeter than it was yesterday. Isn't that amazing? And I believe it'll be like that for all of eternity, by some miracle. Every day will be sweeter than the last, even though every day itself and every moment was pure paradise all by itself, somehow there will be this like increasing expression of God's infinite nature for eternity. Um, but the story is happening now, folks. I've always said it, God is not going to crumple up Okay, if I had a sheet of paper here, I would do it. God is not going to crumple up the story of world history on this planet as we know it and throw it in the trash bin as if it was some kind of mistake. No way. 
it's clinically happening according to his plan. Okay? And um, I believe that as we put him first in our minds and on our lips and in our desires, that he will supernaturally bless us. Okay? The Bible talks about it this way. There is the greatest commandment, which is you shall love God first, above all other things. Okay? And if everyone was properly obeying that greatest commandment, if you as an individual were obeying that greatest commandment, then you experience the blessing of God upon your life. <clears throat> okay. So, man, I love solving movie lines. I love the creative arts. I love imagination. I love um, animation and 3D animation and the characters of Disney. And uh... So I live in this dichotomy, people. A personal story now. I'm just, just checking into personal land here. Um, what a dichotomy in my own mind. We need people to get saved. We need people to confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But I also do believe that there's this great joy and pleasure of God in um, seeing people do creative works like uh, we have at a place called Disney, you know. Um, So, I, I would like to see just people, I, one, of my, one of my truest beliefs, folks, is that when people get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, and you're obeying the two greatest commandments, you know, loving God with all your heart and loving your neighbor as yourself, and you're confessing that Jesus Christ is God, and you understand that God is three persons, and you confess that, and you know the Bible is true, and you're, and you're walking, you know, in personal relationship with God, then you are unique from all the other people. And then you actually should do what you want to do. You actually should do who God made you. Maybe that's being a Disney animator. Maybe that's being a Disney singer. Maybe that's being a, you know, I'm just picking Disney, an, an artist or something. But I just weep for the children. You've got to eat your meat and potatoes before you focus on dessert. But the reality is, God is the full package. Like God is both your meat and potatoes and your dessert and every good thing you've ever wanted. And what you do for a living, what you do among other people in this life, is just, you know, what He made you to do. What do you feel like doing? But so, you've got to get saved. You've got to confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Okay? Ask Him to forgive you of all your sin. Um, talk to Him daily. Ask Him questions. Learn to hear His voice better and better. Love Him above everything else. And then, you actually should do what you want to do. Because that's who God made you. Don't argue with who God made someone. Like, it, it's, it's one thing when the person is not saved. Okay? And it, they're not saved and they're not confessing the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Because then you can have what you call, things are at war in their soul. Okay? Because if you're not at peace with God, if you're not lined up with what God wants, which is the confession of Jesus Christ as Lord in your life, then your desires can be misplaced, and your path can be misplaced. But, okay, once you're saved and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and, and you spend time praying, you, you should do what God made you to do. And you'll feel it. You'll be happy to do it. You'll feel at peace. And uh, so that's, that's what I would love to see. I would honestly love to see what happens, and what a country like the United States, for example, would look like if the entire place would be baptized in the Holy Ghost and in love with Jesus and confessing Him as God. I would love to see what industry would look like. I would love to see what film would look like. I would love to see what everything would look like. What would go up and what would go down? What would increase and what would diminish? What would change and what would stay the same? What would, you know? Because when God comes inside of human beings in large numbers, Things will change for the better. It will always be for the better. I'm just, I just can't wait to see what that would look like. I think there would be a lot more innovation. I'm guessing there would be 
more beautiful works of art. I'm guessing there would be more mind-blowing symphonies. I'm guessing there would be more beautiful stories written and told and, and movies created. I'm guessing there would be better health everywhere. I'm guessing there would be a healing of people's um, eating desires. I'm guessing there would be a lot of beautiful things. But who am I to limit the genius that God might place in someone that, that will blow me away regarding what they're capable of doing? In, in, in anything. Maybe it's playing a, a musical instrument. But I want to see the children glorifying Christ. God calls us all children. So when I say the children, I'm talking to myself. I'm talking with every human on the planet. I want to see all the children glorifying the Father, God, Jesus Christ, the entire Trinity, okay, in their hearts and on their lips. And then what happens as a result of that will be acceptable. To God because we're not out of alignment with the greatest commandment and the greatest priority okay it's just a healing of the way things need to be the healing of the way God wants things to be okay so if everyone loves God the most and everyone respects the name of Jesus the most and the Holy Ghost and the Trinity and loves God and worships God and gives thanks to God and always acknowledges God for everything in their lives and loves God and loves the words of Jesus and loves the Bible. Okay. Then there is safety in being passionate about your career. Okay? Because it's not the idol, it's not the number one thing in your heart. It's not the number one thing in your life. Your identity as a child of God, your worship of God and Jesus, is always the highest thing. Okay? Okay? So then, there is what we call, there's a sense of peace in the land when we pursue our careers. And we are passionate about certain things that God designed us to do. Like dance. Live music of any variety, you know, the whole, the whole gamut. But the priority needs to get healed. The acknowledgement and thanks unto God and Jesus Christ needs to get healed. And then, blessing will flow on everyone's career and the work of everyone's hand. I pray for companies that have talented people, so to speak, that um, that uh, aren't in love with, that aren't currently in love with God or worshiping Jesus. I pray for them to be healed. And um, I would love to see some famous film score composers live the, the latter ends of their life directly for the name of Jesus and for the cause of love. Like I. You know, it's like the, God, the Bible says, God's gifts and calling can never be withdrawn, but the heart needs to be redeemed. You know? I'd love to see talented people get filled with the love of Jesus and filled with the conviction that God is love and say, you know what, for the rest of my life, I'm going to give my talents and my energy to that which is love-centric and that which glorifies God and glorifies Jesus. We should have far more Christian music on this planet than we currently do. The ratio of Christian to non-Christian music is clearly imbalanced. And it's simply a direct result of the kids not being fed enough of the knowledge of God. Okay. So, <laughs> oh man, so I'm excited about the Golden State Warriors game tonight, we should see some awesome threes put on display by God himself, isn't that amazing? Like folks, here we are on a ball that's spinning around at several thousand miles an hour in the midst of a massive universe with galaxies everywhere, controlled by this almighty God. 
And here is this game known as basketball that he ordained in his infinite wisdom that is going to bring him glory using numbers as it plays out. It's amazing. Okay. I've always said that God is the funnest person in the universe. Imagine Walt Disney times 1,000 being your dad. Well, God is times infinity. <laughs> the guy is fun. The guy is whimsical, imaginative, creative, spontaneous, unpredictable, incredibly talented, incredibly humorous, beyond hilarious when he wants to, like, you're just like, and he's rich. <laughs> Fabulously rich. <laughs> Fabulously rich. I have to say that one more time because it's just so fun. God is fabulously rich. There you go. <laughs> um, and, uh, um, it's amazing to me how important the gospel is, okay? It's like, it's amazing. Confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You are now a child of God, and God promises to provide for his own children. What father who has sons and daughters isn't going to make sure they have divine providence for good, healthy food? Well, you become a son or a daughter of God by means of confessing that Jesus Christ is God, okay? And uh, so that gospel to the world, you know, and then children should be raised in, in delightful, happy upbringings with their fathers and their, uh, their mothers and, you know, learn to love and have friends and sure, absolutely, places.